In this part of the review, we're looking at area under the normal curve. So if we want to find the area under uh, a region of the normal curve, we're going to use our calculators. Uh, you could do this with tables as well, but uh, we have practiced using our TI-83 or 84 calculators um, using the function normal CDF. So let's go ahead and practice with the first two. Whenever you um, want to find something less than a certain z-score in the normal curve, you're going to sketch yourself the curve sketch uh, the negative 2.2 in this case, sketch the z-score which is somewhere down here, negative 2.2 is a ways to the left and then it says less than, so I'm going to shade to the left of that, so I want to know the area under that little tail of the curve, it's going to be something fairly small. To do this I'm going to use the function normal CDF and I want to go from left to right when I use normal CDF every single time. So my left side, um, because it goes on forever and ever and ever, is going to be some very negative number. Um, I use negative nine because I don't like typing a lot of keys, but you could use negative a million if you wanted. Uh, something very far away from zero. And then my right side, I stop at negative 2.2, and when I punch this into my calculator, second dister normal CDF, and I get 0 0.014. So a very small probability. That's the area under the normal curve that I just found. So it's very small once you get beyond the 2 and negative 2. This next one here, same idea. I'm going to do normal CDF again, but I'm trapped between two known areas. So if I sketch myself a picture, negative 1.7 and positive 1. I'm going to be finding the area in between those two. So I'm thinking probably 75%. It's, it's a pretty sizable chunk of the normal curve. So normal CDF of, and I go from my left again, negative 1.7, to my right, I stop at 1. And when I do that, 0.797 is what I get. So about 70, almost 80% of the normal curve is trapped in that region. Last one, this thing says find the area within 2.5 standard deviations of the mean. To find within, I need to start from the middle and go out 2.5. 2.5 over here. I need to go back 2.5. Negative 2.5 over here and I want to find the area trapped within those two. Now that's going to be most of the normal curve, and we're thinking 99% type of thing. So normal CDF, and I'm trapped between negative 2.5 and 2.5. And when I type that into my calculator, I get point 0.988, if I round that off, 0.988, so almost 99%. Skipping on here, it says calculate a percentile for a value once you know the z-score. So a product's weight has a z-score of 0 0.6, what is its percentile? Um, switch colors here. Percentile is area to the left on the normal curve, so if a z-score of 0 0.6 falls right around here, percentile is going to be that area off to the left, and it's usually then uh, uh, expressed as a percent instead of like 0.98, it'd be 98.8. So in this case, to the left of this, we're going to do normal CDF again, and we're going to go from negative infinity, some negative large number, to 0.6. And when we do that, we get 0.726, or 72.6%. If you are in the high percentiles, like the 100th percentile, that means you tend to do above everyone else. If you are in the first percentile, that means you are below everyone else. So on a test, being in the per first percentile is not a good thing. Uh, continuing on here, it says calculate two tails of area from a z-score. So what proportion of the normal curve is more than 1.8 standard deviations from the mean? Switch colors again here. More than 1.8 standard deviations. Sketch our normal curve. 1.8, 1.8, negative 
more than that distance away means we're looking at the tails, we're not looking at the middle. So if you're doing a two-sided hypothesis test, this might be something that comes up. There's a couple ways you can approach that. You can say, well, I know the area of the whole curve is 1 or 100%. If I find the middle and then subtract that from 1, that would get it for me. Or I could say, well, I know this is symmetrical, and I could just find one tail and double it. So there's a couple different approaches. Uh, let's go ahead and try the uh, find the middle, subtract from 1. So 1 minus the middle, and I know the middle is negative 1.8 to 1.8. So 1 minus normal CDF, negative 1.8 to positive 1.8. And when I type that into my calculator, I'm going to type it all in one straight shot. I get 0 0.072. And you can see from my picture, the little green shaded in area looks like it's probably about 7%. The yellow area is much larger. Um, so that uh, seems to be pretty reasonable here. And that would be the proportion there. Last thing says, understand that Z star from the confidence interval calculation comes from finding the number of standard deviations you need to go each way to find the middle, let's say 95%, 99%, whatever. Uh, example with that, how many standard deviations from the middle of the normal curve do you go each direction for a 95% confidence interval? If I were to sketch a normal curve, I could play around with different values and say, let's guess negative 2 to 2. And if I did that, if I did normal CDF from negative 2 to 2, I would get 0 0.9554. 0 0.954. And so I need to maybe get my a little bit less. So if I were to say, let's try 1.95. 1 1.95, this would be negative over here and do the same thing. I could repeat this process uh, over and over again and I would get kind of zeroed in. So in this case I get 0.949. So I'm getting really close to 95 percent. The value, uh, if you're rounding off to three digits, that's going to get me the middle 95 percent of the confidence interval or the middle 95 percent of the normal curve is going to be negative 1.960 and positive 1.960 you might recognize that number from your reference sheet. I give you this number ahead of time. The important part is to know that the reason we use this as our Z star is because that's how many standard deviations you go this direction and this direction uh, so that uh, you fill in your confidence interval with that percentage under the normal curve. It comes from reverse calculating the normal curve. So that's the important thing I want you to know there. And that is uh, the normal curve part of the review.